Hey guys, Julian here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make sh classic Chicago house in the style of Frankie Knuckles. So, as usual, you get the project file and the samples from this video in the description, and if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because they'll be available shortly. But yeah, let's get started. So the first sound that we have here is this bass, which sounds like this. So what this is, is it's just following the chord progression, which is F major, and then A sharp major. Um, and then you can see what's happening here, if I show you this with the stab MIDI, is basically it's playing a slightly different groove from the chords. Like this is the bass, and then these orange notes are the chords, and you can see it's not playing at all the same time. So this is kind of giving it a bit of a cool groove. You can kind of hear how those are playing off of each other, and this is something I've noticed in a lot of this kind of like old school house. Like they have really groovy bass lines and a really groovy stab part like that, or something that was kind of like really rhythmic the way that these stabs are. But then they wouldn't be playing the same thing, and so you get a kind of more like organic, sort of more human feeling groove because obviously, like you know, it would be very easy to just take the mini, or to just take the mini from the stabs and just do this, basically just cut out all the high notes and then use that as the bass. But back in the day, they were playing everything in live for the most part, so they would have played the bass line live and the stab, and yeah, just playing them. At, like playing two different things at the same time kind of makes it feel a little bit more human like I said now the other thing you can see here is I've got a few little extra things at the end of like the second bar like that and that's just some simple stuff like it's just playing F and then C which is the fifth and then another F up there but gives it a little bit more of an interesting feel it kind of makes the bass stand out for that moment when you hear that and yeah, the only other thing I can show you in the mini, which I'll talk about more as I go through this, is you can see I have all these 16th notes, like all of these swung, meaning I have them just pulled back a little bit like that. And what that's doing is that's giving it that really like swung groove. So again, I'll talk about that more as I get to some of the other stuff. But for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What we've got here is we've got a saw wave, and then we've got a square wave, an octave up from that. And then I've got those going into a low-pass filter with a bit of an envelope on it. So that's the original sound, and then with the filter. And I really like using the square wave here. It really helps to get that more old-school kind of warm sound, because you can hear without it. Kind of just like a, almost like a trance pluck, or like a dead mass pluck, or something like that. But when you add that square wave in, kind of gives it that like old school kind of fatness. So then after that, I just have a bit of chorus. You can see it's set like this. This is just hoping to give this some space. And I hear in a lot of this old school kind of house, not just Frankie Knuckles tracks, but all of these kind of like Chicago style house tracks. A lot of times they have these really like chorusy kind of big juicy bass lines like this. And so that's what that's on there for. After that, I've just got a bit of saturation to give it a bit more kind of warmth and just beef it up a little bit. And then we just have this EQ8, which is cutting out like around like 100 to like 3 or 400 hertz. And then I'm boosting the lawn. So I'm just cutting out it to make room for the kick. You can hear when I turn that off versus when I turn it on. It's a lot easier to hear the kick. And then I'm also just boosting the lawn just to make it a bit stronger. So this is the bass. Next sound we have here is the lead, which sounds like this. So I'll show you the notes on this one. It's just playing this pretty simple thing. I wrote this over top of the chord steps. So it kind of follows them. Like you can see how it starts on A and then goes up to D. Pretty simple stuff there. You can see I've also got all the 16th notes of this one swung a little bit. So we've kind of got everything swung. And this is kind of what I was saying with the bass. I have the bass swung and I have everything else swung. But yeah, like with this lead, for example, you can hear it actually a lot more. So it just gives everything that really tight kind of like swung groove that's very popular in this style of house. 
So yeah, so then for the sound on this one, I'm maybe using Operator. I was trying to recreate one of those more kind of like classic FM sounds like you hear in a lot of this style of house. Like FM synths like the DX7, the Yamaha DX7, and stuff like that were very, very popular at this time with a lot of these producers, Frankie Knuckles included. And so I was trying to create one of those kind of leads. And so what we've got going on here is we've got two sine waves doing some FM. And yeah, that's what's creating the sound. Here's just the sine wave. You can hear it's kind of a bit just dry sounding and doesn't really like stand out as much. But when we add that little FM in from the second oscillator. There we go. And it's really not that difficult. You can see like this is pretty much just turning up this oscillator. You could add more. The thing with these kind of FM leads is it's almost better to like take your time, take your time and try to make something a little bit more subtle like this. Where it's not doing a whole lot of crazy FM stuff, it's just really simple. But it's just like what works really, really well here. Then, to make those super complex sounds, because you still want it to be a little bit softer and kind of like sine wavy. So then after that, I'm just going to a bit of LFO on the pitch. You can see I've got the rate up really fast and I've got the amount there. So it's just giving it a bit of vibrato. That's what it's doing. And then just by having a really low amount, you can hear it. Yeah, it just makes it more subtle. There's without it, and then with it. So it just kind of gives it a cool texture. After that, we just have an echo doing dotted eighth notes, and then a reverb. And these two are just giving it a bit of space, you can hear. The echo really helps for like the vintage kind of like delay feel. And that's the lead. So the next thing we have here is this chord stab, which is three layers, and it sounds like this. So I'll show you the MIDI first. Basically, it's playing this. It's just going between these two chords, F major 7, and then D sharp major 7. Or A sharp major 7. And you can see what's going on here is, yeah, it's just playing this kind of pattern. Where it's like really syncopated and bouncy. And so this is kind of like the key here. Um, these are very popular in Frankie Knuckles tracks and also a lot of like classic Chicago house. And this is kind of how you want to program them. Like just sort of using like one or two different chord shapes and kind of making these like really bouncy patterns. It's not really too difficult to be honest with you, but yeah. So for the sound on this one, like I said, it's three layers. We have the string, this choir sample, and then this M1 piano. So the first one here is the string. And what this is meant to do is it's kind of like providing the body of the sound. If you listen to all three of these together, and if you listen to them in the track, These three layers get blended together, but you still couldn't have this track without any one of them. Like if I turn off the string, you can hear, like I said, like the body of it is kind of missing. If I turn off the choir, kind of missing those smooth highs. And then if I take off the piano, it doesn't have as much attack. So that's what this is doing. It's just adding that kind of like mid rangey sort of body to the sound. And so all this was was just like a string st sample. Something like this, the same thing you would use to make like one of those super high string like to make like one of those kind of sounds. And yeah, I just put it in here and then I've got it playing the chords, got a little bit of reverb on there. And that is it for the string. The next one here is the choir sample which sounds like this. So like I said, this is just a choir sample. So like one of those old school kind of ones. And this is giving it that really smooth, kind of bright high end. You can see these are all playing in sort of different octaves. I guess you can't really see that because I have these pitch things at weird things. But yeah, these are all playing like kind of different spots. And so you can hear, this is just adding that nice bright high end to the sound. So now I just have a little bit of reverb on that. And that is the choir sample. Then the last layer in here is just this M1 piano, which sounds like this. This is just a one shot of an M1 piano. 
Obviously, very popular house piano sound used by everyone from Frankie Knuckles to like modern deep house producers. Yeah, if you want to make deep house, you really can't can't miss the sound. So that's in there, and then you can hear that's just giving it a little bit more attack because it kind of needs that. And then is the chord steps. So like I said, it's just kind of like taking this MIDI, which is pretty simple, just going between a few different chords and then layering it up with the different samples to make it kind of work right and fit into the track. So then the last thing I have here is the drum group, which sounds like this. And so I called this 909 because these are all 909 drums. You can see we've got a 909 kick, 909 rim shot and snare, 909 clap, 909 hi-hats. And yeah, so basically that's what's going on here. We have all these different 909 samples. You hear like we've got the kick and the clap, like the main drums. And then we've got the hi-hats, the open one and the closed one. And you can hear we have the percussion. And then I have these all in a group here. And then I'm just kind of processing them as if it was like a 909 drum machine. So if you don't know, the 909 and the 808 and the 707 and even the 606 were really popular back in the old Chicago house days. Um, they were used a ton throughout all these kind of tracks. Frankie Knuckles used them a lot. Like I've heard a lot of 707s in his tracks and a ton of 909s. And so basically what I'm doing here is I've got these all in a group and then I'm processing them as if it was just like that drum machine. Like as if I just had the drum machine. So I've got... A saturator on there and it's just hoping to kind of give this all a little bit more like texture and character the thing about the 909 is you can have like the most faithful and like high quality recordings of a 909 drum machine and they're still gonna sound kind of flat like the 909 isn't really made to sound like so I don't know you kind of need to do some, some stuff to it so that's what the saturator is doing it's just kind of giving it that like warm kind of texture and fitting it in with everything as well as the vibe of this kind of track so that is pretty much it for this one i just want to show you guys some techniques um and yeah so that's me for today guys and before i go i want to say that this video is dedicated to frankie knuckles i know he's been gone for a few years now but man i mean his music has informed so much of what i've been into and i'm sure so much of what you guys have been into so i just wanted to say like a quick quick thing of thanks to him i guess for all that he's done or all that he did music wise um and yeah, so with that, that's what we have for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and make sure to like this video, as well as subscribe. Um, once again, you get the project file and the samples from this video in the description, so make sure to check those out. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there, because they'll be available shortly. Thank you so much, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.